Hey everyone, this is Anthony with the Disarm, and today we're going to continue with some Linux commands that will make your life a lot easier, especially if you're new to Linux and you haven't downloaded many programs yet, and you're going to find some interesting things and in how we do things, and I'll learn a little bit about file permissions. So let's jump right in. Currently we're running Ubuntu version 14.04. And it's very important to keep in mind that these commands will work on any version of Ubuntu and most of these commands will run on just about any version of Linux, any flavor that you can find, whether it's Debian, uh, Linux Mint, Gentoo, Kali, whatever you're working with. So let's take a look at some of these things. We're going to go ahead and open up a terminal. If your terminal isn't on here, by the way, you can click this little Ubuntu button type in terminal and drag it to this launcher here okay so the first thing I want you to notice is something is different if you watched my previous video it says mm -hmm. Anthony at Anthony dash the distro on my previous video showed Anthony at the distro so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that and this is a good thing for you to know too the command is hostname then we just change the host name, which will modify anything after this at symbol. So all of this should change. I'm going to put it back to the distro. Click enter. Must be root. That's right. sudo dash s. My administrative password. The distro. Okay, now I also have to exit out and then reopen my terminal for you to see the effect. And there we have it. Our host name has changed and you can name that whatever you want. Now what I want to do is I want to create a file that can be executed, that has executable privileges. So let's write a quick script. So I've been nano enter. Our standard conventions to writing a bash script are going to be as follows. Pound explanation mark forward slash bin forward slash bash. Now why did I do that? That's telling the system which shell to use. I could have easily put bin Perl or bin python but we want to use the bash because that's what we're programming in. I'll open up a new terminal. And this is another command that's very helpful. It's called the where is command. So I'm going to type where is and what I want to find. So I want to find where bash is located. So I'm going to put bash. And right here, it's going to give me the location. Bin bash. That's exactly what I want to use. And it also shows some other... Um, places in the file system where um, bash is. Example, this is for the man page, which we went over in the last video. And this is used to set command aliases. Let's say I want to update the system. Instead of typing um, sudo apt get update, I can set a command I could set a command alias where I could just type update where that'll do the same thing as typing that full command. So back to our script. So we told the system to use the bash shell. We'll put another comment. Test script. And let's just do something simple. Echo, this is only a test. Now what this should do is when I run the script, it should echo onto the screen saying this is only a test. Now let's type control O, we can name our script. Let's do test script. 
and also it seems that it changed the coloring uh, to make things a little prettier for us and now let's type control X to exit out also if I wanted to name the script in the beginning I could have typed nano test script and it would have created it for me so a file named test script should have been created now in our uh, current working directory let's see ls uh, there it is test script now it looks like I forgot something so at the end of test script we should have uh, an extension just like we have firefox underscore war, uh, wallpaper dot png it should be test script dot sh for a shell so if this happens a simple way to change this is the mv command the move name of our file test script and then we'll just change the name test script dot sh that's what we want it to be type ls and the name of our file change from test script to test script.sh perfect now let's type a command ls dash l dash l for long listing this is going to display some information about the files and directories that we have in our current working directory it tells us about our desktop our documents downloads um, all the folders that we have in here and then also the files here's our test script now let's narrow it down to just the file that we want to view because this is a little clogged up here so let's type ls l test script again I use the tab to auto finish instead of typing out test script sh okay now this narrows it down to the file that we want to look at right here and let's break this down a little bit so the first thing we see is a dash now what does this have a dash and this has a D well this first thing right here this first little character place is for special permissions so up here you'll notice all these D's are associated with blue which our command line is letting us know that this is for directories so D is directory and this is special permissions this is saying that this videos folder has special permissions for a directory and right here we have a dash which means there are no special permissions next we have nine characters rw dash rw dash r dash dash so let's break this down into three sets of three rw dash this first set of three is the permissions of the owner this next set of three is the permissions of a group and the final set of three is the permissions of all users so what does this mean rw dash r is for read w is for write and now we have a dash let's go back up a little bit right here we have rwx that x means it has executable permissions this video folder has for a group read permissions no write permissions and execute permissions so we have this test script this is telling us that we have no permission to execute it well let's try that out let's see what happens when we try to execute this test script okay now what's happening here I'm typing test I'm hitting the tab key and it's not finishing shouldn't it be finishing no because when you're executing a script there's something you have to do dot forward slash that's how you execute a script so we do dot forward slash test script dot sh we have permission denied and also you'll notice if you try to tab it's not going to uh, auto finish for you either so let's fix this how do we give this script permission and this is useful because let's say you download a program extract the program it has a shell script that you are supposed to run but you can't run it because anything that you download isn't going to have this 
execute permission automatically built in. You have to allow it. That's how this works. So let's allow our script to be run. Now, the command that we use to give permissions in Linux is called chmod, which stands for change mode. And now I'm going to type plus x. So this is going to say plus execute. We're going to add the execute permission to this file. I could have easily said minus execute if it already had it, or I could have said minus read. That would be interesting. Whoever's on this computer wouldn't be able to read the file. So let's go back. Let's do plus x and the name of our script, testscript.sh. Before we run it, let's see what changes were made. ls-l testscript. Now it seems the execute command was added to this program. Okay, now let's try to run it and let's see what happens. First I'm going to type clear. And now dot forward slash test script. And it echoed out to the screen, this is only a test. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. That's exactly what happened. Thank you for joining me and stay tuned until next time.